Put your hands together. Hallelujah. We have victory over our health, victory over our finances, victory. Hallelujah. Victory over our health. Hallelujah. Victory over that situation. Victory over that problem. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but when the stone was rolled away, that problem was rolled away. And so now we are victorious. Hallelujah. We have the victory. And because of who he is, we give him glory. And because of who he is, we give him praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And because of who he is, we're going to lift our voice and say, Lord, we worship you because of who you are. Anybody just want to worship him this morning? Hallelujah. We worship you because of who you are. The song goes on to say, Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> 
you're my provider. Jehovah Nisi, you reign in victory. Jehovah Shalom, you're a God who gives us peace. And so we worship him because of who he is. Hallelujah. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Yes. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you. Because of who you are. From the top, because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because, because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are. Because of who I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are.
Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah's Shalom. My Prince of Peace. We worship God not only because of what he's done, but because of who he is, because he's Jehovah Jireh that supplies our needs, because he's a sovereign God, because he's still in control. Hallelujah. We praise him for who he is today. Our prayer is that you remain in the same spirit of praise and worship throughout the remainder of the service. Amen. Amen. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Because of who God is, <laughs> we give him all the praise and glory. Amen, amen. On behalf of our pastor, Selena Johnson, I welcome each of you, those that are on Zoom, those that are on Facebook, those are looking even on YouTube. We just give God the praise. We welcome you here this morning. Amen. Amen. I just like to remind you all, those that are on Zoom and on the, um, please keep yourself muted unless otherwise asked to unmute. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resurrection of your son has given us new life and a renewed hope. Help us to live as new people in pursuit of building your kingdom here on earth and making disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. Grant us wisdom to know what we must do, the will to do it, the courage to undertake it, the perseverance to continue it, and the strength to complete it. Lord, we praise you. We glorify your name. Lord, we ask that you bless this morning worship service and all the participants and all that is here under the sound of my voice. Lord, touch them for there's someone here that needs comforting. There's someone here that needs a healing. There's someone here that needs a breakthrough. Lord, we ask
invite you to touch in them. These things we ask in your precious name, your son Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen, amen. We will now have scripture reading coming from the book of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. It will be coming from Mr. Lord's Green. She will be reading off of Zoom. Good morning, Mount Zion. As Jackie said, I will be reading from John reading chapter from 20. John, chapter 20. Reading from John chapter 20. Reading from John chapter 20. Reading from John. Oh, Verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas called Didymus, one of the 12 was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week, le uh, excuse me, a week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples. Disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. We would now have a message from our pastor, Selena Johnson, The Dangers of Doubt. Good morning, everyone. I greet you in the precious name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let's give God a hand clap of praise this morning for showing up and showing strong. This morning, I want to share with you that doubt is contagious. It can spread just like a disease, y'all. So today, we're going to deal with the topic, the dangers of doubt, as Jackie has just told us. Um, again, uh, my name is Reverend Selena Johnson. Um, we are here at Mount Zion United Methodist Church right here in Georgetown. Amen. We are the oldest African-American congregation in the nation's capital. And so I'm so blessed to be serving at this place at this time. Last week on Easter, we talked about how when we remember what Jesus said, our confusion goes to confidence, confidence in God. And when we have fear, when we remember what Jesus said, our fear goes to faith. And when we have doubt, when we remember what Jesus said, it goes to delight. And so the word says, delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so today we're going to see how doubt gets transformed into deliverance. Let us pray. Holy and wondrous God, the God of a second chance, the God of a second, third, fourth, fifth chance for some of us. 
Thank you for this opportunity to hear your word. I pray, oh God, that you would apply this word to our hearts as we hear it and let it manifest in our lives this very week as we live it. May the words out of my mouth and the meditations on all hearts gathered here be acceptable in your sight. God, our strength, our redeemer, amen. amen. The disciples moved from doubt to delight, and they went back to doubt, and then to deliverance in this one passage we heard today. Thank you so much to our historian, Dolores Green, who read that for us. Um, some of you may be wondering why I have this bonnet on my head. Some of you out there in Facebook, um, I am dressed in my 1800s period costume because today is Cast Appreciation Sunday. <laughs> so I'm very excited to be uh, dressed like this. Um, the cast of our movie, uh, Celebrating Freedom, we're going to have a little bit of a celebration today afterwards and a special time of prayer for those who worked on that. But right now, we are looking at these disciples in John chapter 20 who went from doubt to delight, then back to doubt, and then to deliverance. Um, in verse 19, it says, that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors. Why were they behind closed doors, Jackie? Well, it says that right there, Dolores, because they were afraid. They were afraid of the Jewish authorities. They were afraid the authorities were going to do to them what they had done to Jesus. Arrest them and kill them unjustly. But then their, diet, their doubt and their fear goes into delight. Because verse 19 continues, Jesus came and stood among them. Oh, hallelujah. That one short verse just changed it all. Jesus came and stood among them. Oh, hallelujah. And he said, peace be with you. Uh -huh. After he said this, he showed them his hands, he showed them his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So, the peace was bequeathed to them twice. He gave them his peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And the joy was received by them because it says when they saw him, they were filled with joy. Jesus' prayer was coming to fruition. Do you know that Jesus prayed for us? Do you know that Jesus prayed for his disciples in John chapter 17? He prayed that our joy would be full. Yes, yes, yes. You can't beat a prayer from Jesus. And so, his prayer had come true. They were filled with joy. Um, the peace was filling the room. It was all breathed out into the room. They had the power to forgive and to move forward with the Jesus movement. The Jesus movement was on its way, y'all. Yeah. But then, hmm. <sighs> right now. here come old Doubting Thomas. <laughs> Verse 24 says, Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the 12, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, mm, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and I put my finger in his wounds left by the nails and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Hmm. Thomas's doubt must have begun to spread. Because I told you how doubt can be contagious, right? I told you all that, right? So it must have begun to spread. And um, it must have spread onto the others and infected them, even though they had already been filled with the joy. Well, you say, no, Pastor Selena, they had encountered the resurrected Christ himself. Mm -hmm. how, could they, how could they be filled with doubt again? Well, you know, we've encountered Christ, most of us ourselves as well, but then sometimes we fall back. So but how, 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 how did that happen? And why do I think that happened? Well, because if we continue on in verse 26, it says, after eight days, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them, even though the doors were locked. Well, let's stop right there. Why were the doors locked again? Well, the doors were locked because they were afraid again. They were back locked up. Any of you ever get back locked up? Jesus had set you free and then you get back locked up again. 
They had shut the doors and locked them. And it's not like, see, the hardware back then, I'm, an, I'm a former architect, so this was very fascinating to me. So the hardware back in those days was not like we have today, where you can just like, you know, maybe you just push a button and, oh, maybe you accidentally lock the door. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you just turn a little and you lock the door. I mean, they had to take a big piece of wood and slide it across uh -huh. and then and latch it down to the key latch. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but it says the doors, plural, were locked. So they went and they, they barricade themselves back in. They were back afraid, y'all. This is what I fear. This is what I think. They were back afraid. The disciples, Thomas's doubt had kind of spread to all of them, and now they were back in fear. So I don't know if you've ever had this happen to your life, but folk come in and make you doubt what Jesus has just poured into your mind, make disbelief come into what your blessing just was set, all set up, the joy was there, and then you go out and you encounter somebody and they get down in the mouth about what you said and they start saying, oh, I don't know, unless I see it, uh, you know, you have, some of you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you know, this happens a lot, it's happened to me. I probably have done it to other people myself when I couldn't see the vision, right? But, you know, unfortunately, I think we have doubters even in the church, right? Yeah. There are people who don't think even at Mount Zion that we can reach our sacred places goal. But we can and we will. For those of you who don't know, we've been selected to be a part of the sacred places in this nation. Just 15 places selected this year. And so we can make our goal, not because we're so powerful, but because Jesus is so powerful. We had doubters uh, about this movie, Catherine Lavanda. We, we had doubters about this movie, uh, Sister Bobby, because um, it was something we had never done. Shoot, I had doubts myself. <laughs> If we kept vacillating between doubt and faith ourselves, we need to move forward in faith. We can't move this old ship of Zion forward if we keep pulling back on the rudders. Oh, hallelujah. On that note, I want to say that we don't just need everybody to participate in the sacred places. We need you to ask your family and your friends and your family members and my family members because I'm declaring May to be Make That Money Month. <laughs> Some of you in the sacred places team know what I'm talking about, uh, Brother Larry. May is going to be Make That Money Month. <laughs> I'm praying that we have uh, the big givers, the $10,000, the $20,000 givers. I'm praying that we have our average givers, the $100, the $200. I'm praying that we have 
are small givers, the $10, the $20 givers to the Sacred Places Fund because um, it's not about uh, how much we give, but it's about our relationship with God and our moving forward in faith uh, through our, our giving and what we do. And how many of you know that it's understanding that God who provided us with everything in the first place will bless us when we give it back to God? breast down, shaken together, and running over. It's about this God of grace who stores up credit for us in heaven. It's about the God of grace who replenishes everything that you need. God is our provider. We just heard about, we just sung about it. God is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. Yes. Church, I'm so thankful for God's grace. Yes. I'm so grateful for God's grace. Oh, we serve a God of a second chance and sometimes third and fourth. I am so thankful. Anybody out here thankful for God's grace, for God's mercy, for God's provision? Hallelujah. Friends, we see it right here in the text. We see a second chance right here in the text. Because even though they were locked up back again in fear and doubt, Jesus came back. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ought to jump up right there. And show. Jesus came back a second time. So they went from doubt to delight, back to doubt. And then for their deliverance, Jesus graciously returned and repeated the whole thing over again, just for Thomas. That's a, that's a gracious and merciful God right there. That is a merciful God. Jesus did a take two. Kind of like we did when we were doing our movie scene. Some of you remember who were in the movie where Denise had that, she had that thing, she went, take this scene, take two. <laughs> Y'all remember that little thing that she had? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sometimes we had to take three and four, but not. But Jesus came back for a take two, hallelujah, because doubt had crept back in. In verse 26, it says, even though the doors were locked, Jesus, somebody say Jesus, <laughs> Jesus entered and stood among them. Oh, he came back to them. He will never leave us or forsake us. And he said again, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe, Thomas, believe. And Thomas responded, my God and my Lord. You see that? He got a chance to have his joy as well. Jesus' joy decimates doubt. Oh, hallelujah. Even old doubting Thomas was delivered there. Brothers and sisters in Christ, so we don't have to hate doubt. We don't have to hate doubters. People who doubt are just keeping it real. They're just expressing their real, honest feelings. We just have to pray for them like Jesus prayed for us in John chapter 17. Pray for your doubters. Pray for those people that their joy might be full, that they might see Christ for themselves and just, uh, you know, spiritually touch him and let Jesus touch them as well. And because it says, it goes on in our text to say, after Thomas cried out, my Lord, my God. It says in verse 29, Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Oh, that's us. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you, 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 and me will believe that Jesus is the Christ, Son of God, and that believing we will have life in Jesus' name. Jesus came back to deal with the doubt. Oh, hallelujah. This movement needed to move forward. Jesus was not going to let doubting Thomas stop that train. <laughs> you've heard of Thomas the train before, but you've never heard of Thomas the train stopper <laughs> because Jesus came back and delivered him. My God, Jesus took 12, uh, well, 11 scared men locked up in a room and created a whole movement. He moved the Jesus movement forward by decimating the doubt because it's not about us, but it's about God and there is nothing impossible for our God. The Jesus movement had to move forward for future generations, for us so that we could believe, so that we could believe even though we don't actually see Jesus in the physical. Miracles, wonders, signs needed to continue so that you and I could come to believe. So whatever doubts are holding you back right now, they can't hold you back anymore. Where you need doubt to be transformed into delight, know that Jesus has got you. Where you need doubt to be transformed into deliverance, Jesus has got you. Don't hate yourself, friends, even if you doubt in your own mind. 
Don't hate the doubters around you because Jesus has that transformation power. Jesus has that power to bring us the joy that he prayed for us, the God-filled, uh, God-breathed anointing that he breathed on them in this passage, just like uh, for them, he has it for us. So don't let doubt have the final say, because the Jesus movement has to move forward. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Yes. Decimate the doubt. Amen. Decimate the doubt in our homes, in our lives, in our minds, in our churches, so that we might see miracles break forth in your name, Jesus, so that we might see growth in your name, Jesus, so that many who cannot see you now will come to believe and believe in your name and have life. So many people walking around in death. The world needs life that you give, God. So make us your vehicles. God, I pray for abundance over each and every person that's under the sound of my voice here in the room, in the Zoom room, in the Facebook, where there is lack in their lives, oh God, pour out abundance. Where there's doubt, turn it into delight. Where there's trouble, breathe peace right into their ears, whisper into their ear, oh God, you can. Peace be with you. In your mighty name, Jesus, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I have two invitations this morning. The first one is to faith in this Christ who can bring you peace and bring you from death to life. So if you are here this morning and you don't know this Christ and you would like to confess on today, I just invite everybody to bow their heads, close their eyes. And just say, Jesus, I surrender all. Forgive me, God, and save me from my sin. I believe you. You died on the cross for me. You rose from the grave for me. And so I pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 Our second call is for membership at Mount Zion. As I said in the message, we are moving forward in faith and we've had this wonderful movie premiere on today on a, a last month. We got the Sacred Places campaign going. The marvelous music ministry is just uh, amazing. And so um, we invite you to become a part of Mount Zion. If that is you here today or in the Zoom room or on Facebook, you can contact us and let us know. And we will set up the next new member class, uh, which we hope to bring in in October of next year during our anniversary. But uh, we will just uh, get you oriented and um, have some special classes with you. So if that is you, contact us on mtzionumcdc.org. That's our website. You're going to see that again in the announcements. But uh, you can just click on contact us. We would love to hear from you. Or if you need, in need of a special prayer, we would love to hear from you as well. At this time, I'm going to invite our choir to come back up and render another selection. Hallelujah.
complete and my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Saves me from every sin and all. Oh, yes. So It is now giving time. We get back to the Lord where he has, this small portion of what he has done for us. Amen. So we now have our offering video showing. In. Friends, this is your moment to participate in. in the mission and ministry that God is doing in and through Mount Zion United Methodist Church. We are so excited to continue our weekly meals for the Shelter Challenged, continue our online worship and our 
marvelous music ministry our virtual history tour celebrating all that god has done these 205 years through the oldest african-american congregation in the nation's capital and we're just so blessed and so we ask you to prayerfully consider now your giving of your tithe or your offering on today you can give online go to mtzionumcdc.org and click on the giving tab you scroll down you can fill out the form to give through the website or you can use cash app the cash tag is dollar sign capital M T Z I O N capital U M C capital G in Georgetown you can also use PayPal through our online interface or by just using the church's email address or you can send a check directly to us Mount Zion UMC 1334 29th Street Northwest DC 20007 Let us pray. Holy and loving creator, you are a generous giver. And that's what we strive to be in our tithes and offering. We have been reluctant to let go of our affinity for the things of this world and things we are attached to. We dedicate these offerings to you the greatest of all givers in the name of him whose name is above every other name in Christ we pray amen 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 I would like for us at this moment, I guess I'm gonna keep this mask on. For those of you who don't know, we had uh, the premiere of the movie Celebrating Freedom on March 20th, <laughs> amen. amen. And it was a wonderful online event. Yes, praise God, praise God. We had so many people to participate. Um, there were uh, over 1,300 views on our YouTube, and we had people participating live as it was uh, being premiered. But today is just a day where we take a moment to appreciate the people who were part of the cast and, uh, and the crew and the narrators and all of those. So I would like to invite us to come up to the altar here. We're just gonna have a little time of prayer. Or Ms. Ms. Bobby, you can stay there. We'll, we, so those of you who were part of the, um, the cast and the crew and the musicians, well, Trey's playing our music for us, so I don't know he's back there. Um, if you would just come up for a moment to the altar with us. all so wonderful to see you all this morning and thank you for everyone who is who is visiting today as part of the cast and crew members um dear friends 
Let us recognize those who have given so graciously to making of the movie about Mount Zion celebrating freedom, which premiered on March 20th. They, they acted, they sang, they played music, they filmed and edited and organized and researched. Some of the people are online there. Um, we extend the altar out to even to the online, to the Zoom people who are there. But uh, everything turned out to be a great success. Glory to God. Amen. Oh, there's Rachel too. She was in it as well. Glory to God. I thank God for um, all of you and for your willingness to uh, lend your talents and your time and, and to make it all effective. So let us have a word of prayer. Creator God, thank you for pulling this particular group of people together to create this artistic work. Um, which we know will go down in the history of Mount Zion. Bless each of them. Shower them with your love, your grace, your peace. We pray that this movie will not just be a great work of art, but that it will be used to open doors for conversations and present gospel truths in such a way uh, that stays with the audiences for weeks, for months, for years. We pray that it would grow your kingdom and her church, all to your glory, God. Amen. 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 Let's give God another hand clap of praise for all of these who participated. Thank you all again so much. Afterwards, we're going to go downstairs and have a little celebration. So, and we're going to watch the, the film. So we invite all of you to stay for that as well. We have some announcements. To share with you a few quick announcements and then we have a closing song. If you have a prayer request um, on your mind, you can drop that in the chat if you are in the Zoom room or if you are here with us and you feel comfortable, you can also speak it out loud. Thank you for worshiping with us. And we just wanna uh, um, acknowledge our visitors on today. If you are visiting today, if you would just stand um, so we can give God a hand praise, hand clap of praise for you. Oh, thank you so much. We are so excited to have our friends with us from am I saying, the Mennonite Academy, is that correct? Yes, from the Mennonite Academy. Thank you guys for coming and for um, continuing to, to visit us every year. We're glad to see you and, and glad um, that you remember us and you remember the history involved. So um, these students are here with us today. We thank God for you. Amen. Let's go to the next slide. And there, there's the information about how to contact us, our church uh, phone number, and the website again is mtzionumcdc.org. I know it sounds like a lot of letters, but it makes sense because it's like Mount Zion United Methodist Church, DC. <laughs> mtzionumcdc.org. So that's where you can contact us. You can call or text me, or you can email the church or call the church. So all the information is there. Let's go to the next one. There's our social media platforms. Um, you can see us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and even TikTok. <laughs> Cast appreciation again is today, and uh, we're gonna go downstairs. We'll have um, a viewing of the movie, time for fellowship, awards, and recognitions. So we're very excited. It, we, we, the carpet up here is red. But we're going to roll out the red carpet downstairs. It's going to be like the Academy Awards down there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Voices of Zion, Black Georgetown Cemetery's project is, uh, is, is conducting a play. And it's going to be opening on May 6th at 7 p.m. And so our very own Trey Walton has composed the score for this film. And uh, for, not, it's a, not a film, it's a play. And uh, we're very, very excited for him. And so check them out. Um, 
I think it's on our website or it's on their website where you can go to get your tickets. Um, the name of the group is uh, New Music Theater. Is that where they go, right, Trey? Alliance of New Music. That's where you go to search and get your tickets for the play. Opening May 6th in just a few weeks. Let's go to the next one. Our eight hours a month campaign continues. So those of you who are on eBlast would, will see that you can sign up for um, your eight hours to contribute to Mount Zion, because if we all pull together, uh, we can get so much more done. So sign up today. I'm glad, thankful for all of you who have already signed up. But if you have not, check that out in your eBlast information. Let's go to the next one. The Baltimore Washington Conference is conducting a pilgrimage tour of all the historic sites throughout the Baltimore Washington Conference. Um, the seat of American Methodism is right here in Baltimore, but we have many historic places. And Mount Zion is included on that tour. So on May 7th, um, we will be open um, down here from noon to uh, noon to 2 p.m. So please let me know if you're available to be in person to volunteer or to show people around. That's going to be on May uh, 7th. The scholarship fund. We are uh, gearing up for these special graduates to be graduating this year, Olivia, Khalees, Kayan, and our other graduates. So if you'd like to contribute to our um, scholarship fund between now and June, we really, really, really appreciate that. And we want to bless our scholars as they move forward. The Sacred Places Award. We are in the midst of this wonderful capital campaign in which the National Fund is going to match us $100,000 if we come up with our end of the deal, which is to raise the $100,000. So if you want to give to Sacred Places, you go online to our uh, website, you click on the giving, or you can just put your phone up to that giving QR code that is right there or um, that you see uh, around in, in the flyer that's in the back um, with information about it. But we have been honored to be selected as one of 15 sites in the whole nation to be part of Sacred Places and the National Fund. So um, we appreciate your help and we ask for your, your help with raising funds on that. Let's go to the next slide. Worship leaders and scripture readers. Jackie Vaughn, our wonderful worship chairperson, is looking for people to serve. We are looking for people to serve as worship leaders and scripture readers. It's a fun way to serve God and be a part of the ministry here. So contact Jackie if you are interested in participating. If you'd like to leave a legacy to Mount Zion, you can, so that after you are gone, your blessings will keep on blessing the next generation. Um, it's easy to do. I've done it in my will. You can do it in yours as well. Contact us if you like that information. Amazon Smiles is also a way to help us. If you look for Mount Zion, comma, Washington United Methodist Church, you can support us when you get all those boxes from Amazon at your doorstep. Thank you so much and have a blessed and great day and rest of your week. That concludes our announcements. We would like to have a, a closing, closing music from our music ministry. Then we're gonna have pastoral prayer and benediction. If you have a prayer request, you can drop it in the chat at this time.
God. Amen. Amen. Just beautiful. I thank God for the diversity of our music ministry. We went from praise and worship to uh, praise songs and to a beautiful traditional hymn of the church played on the organ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look to the Lord. Are there other prayer requests that people would like to speak out loud before we pray and go to benediction? If you are on the Zoom and you are going to continue to, to continue with us, um, stay in the Zoom room. It's going to go out, but then it's going to come back in when we log back in downstairs. If you're going to stay with us, I know Alice is there, our executive producer is there online, and Dolores is there. Um, stay with us, stay in the Zoom room, and we will connect back with you afterwards. Let's look to the Lord. I'd like to lift up a prayer request for, um, for um, Rodney, who helps us with our Saturday supper meals on Saturday. His brother-in-law was found dead um, yesterday, right before we started the meals. And so I just thank God that he pressed on and worked on, but just lift that family up because they are dealing with trauma right now. Yes, prayers for Christine that she would uh, continue with her healing. She could not be with us today. She's one of our enactors. Um, but she's got issues going on with her ankles. So just prayers for her and prayers for the family of Jackie Cole and uh, Larry and Vicki as well. Let's look to the Lord. God, we love and praise and adore you and thank you for this day. We rejoice, we are so glad, we continue to be glad as we move on to our time of celebration, God. We continue to thank you for um, all the creativity that you pour into us that we can pour out for you and for others. We um, pray, oh God, for those who are in need of healing, that your powerful touch will touch them, oh God. You know those who need it on today, you know those who are in the minds of those who are hearing this prayer on today and who, and who are beseeching you, God, to touch with your finger of healing. We lift up in particular um, Christine Willis Bennett for your healing, oh God. Um, we lift up for spiritual healing, those who are grieving, especially Rodney at this time and Lynette and their family and the sisters upon this tragic news of the loss of, their, of his brother-in-law. We lift up all those who are mourning in our congregation who are dealing with times of sadness and grief. Comfort them as only you can, God, through your powerful, precious Holy Spirit. And let them know that life can be returned in abundance, even when we go through seasons of grief and trial. We lift up in particular uh, Jackie Cole, as she uh, prepares to transition to the other side, Lord. None of us know the day or the hour, but you know. And we know that you are with her. We know that you are with um, Vicki and her family and uh, Larry and his family as well at this time. We thank you that you lead and guide us, that you never leave us or forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now unto the one who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the throne of grace, the one who is able to decimate all your doubt, the only wise God, to him be honor, glory, dominion, and power now Henceforth and forevermore, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.